Hey guys, Caleb here. I'm one of the founders and brewers at Pondicetta Brewing Co. I'm back behind the bar again today to show you guys more beer cocktails. Whether you call them beer tales, dupes, even blasphemy, I've got three recipes on how to use beer as your cocktail ingredient, including a take on the classic Moscow Mule. But before we jump in, we're giving away some sticker packs, so stay tuned later in the episode on how to get three stickers. All right, let's do this. All right, so up first, we're going to make a Dreamsicle beer tap. Super simple recipe. It evokes those nostalgia flavors from the ice cream trucks outside, uh, all while being super easy and refreshing to drink. So uh, this is gonna be made with our House Hazy IPA, the Fast and the Hazy. To start out, we're going to do one ounce of vanilla simple syrup. We talked about this before, but Pondicetta makes their own simple syrup. The recipe for this is really easy. It's one cup boiling water, one cup sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. The key is just add that sort of creamy, velvety sweetness that comes along with vanilla flavors. So one ounce vanilla simple syrup. Um, you'll see I'm using a 16 ounce tulip glass. I mentioned this before, but you can use any kind of glassware for this cocktail. We serve our house IPAs in tulip glasses, helps with aroma, aromatics concentrated at the taper of the tulip. But you can use a simple pint glass if that's what you've got available. We're also gonna be adding one ounce of lime juice. Just gonna balance that acid, or balance with acid. Then two ounces of orange juice. It's important to measure your ingredients for a beer cocktail. Similar to a true classic cocktail as well, um, you wanna make sure you get those ratios just right. You can eyeball these things and get pretty close, but you wanna make sure you, you nail that every time. All right, now to top this, with about eight to 10 ounces of Hazy IPA. Most of the time, I don't recommend stirring beer cocktails because you want that carbonation from the beer to carry forward and you don't wanna lose any of those bubbles. Um, but we always make a garnish. We're gonna do half of an orange wheel. So you're gonna take about a quarter inch slice of orange. Then we're gonna cut that right in half down the middle, put a little notch in. And we're ready to go. Let's give this a taste. I mean, right off the bat, I always start with smell. You get that vanilla coming through so strongly, even though it's just a tiny amount of vanilla some sort. It's bright, it's refreshing, it's creamy. Even though there's no, no dairy products, no coconut milk, nothing like that, the cream flavor, the creaminess comes from that vanilla simple syrup. It's balanced nicely with the lime juice. The orange juice obviously adds that depth and fullness of a dream sickle, and the beer just carries it all forward. You can make this with any IPA. Of course, I recommend the Fast and the Hazy, but if that's not available where you live, um, there's lots of good options. Let's start with looking at your favorite local brewery. All right, so up next, we're gonna make a lunchbox. Uh, sometimes you'll see this served as a drop shot. Sometimes you'll see it as a pre-mixed cocktail. Uh, this one actually always has beer in it. We make a version here with almond syrup, our house light lager, low light, and orange juice. This is a super simple recipe. We're gonna start with two ounces of orange juice. We're gonna use one ounce of almond syrup. Uh, some bars uh, that serve liquor will do um, amaretto instead of almond syrup. All right, final ingredient. You're gonna top that with your favorite light lager. Uh, we use low light here at the brewery, uh, but you can use any light lager you have available. Uh, it's gonna add about 10 ounces of beer to this. Super simple. And you're ready to drink. Um, again, don't usually have to stir up your cocktail because the carbonation helps mix it, uh, and you don't wanna lose any of that carbonation. Cheers. Wow, it's, um, it's a pretty wild flavor trip. Uh, this is um, one of those that I think surprises people a lot of times. It reminds me of cherry Coke. Uh, no cherries were added in this process, you'll notice, but that almond flavor really comes through nicely and blends with the orange juice and that beer. You don't even notice the beer flavor. You just carry forward with carbonation um, and delicious. 
You know what? I'd like to see what a comparison looks like when we do a real version with Amaretto. Compare it to our house version that we serve here at Ponte Soto Brunsco. I'm going to mix one up real fast here. Same ingredients, two ounces of orange juice. This time we're going to sub the one ounce of almond syrup for Amaretto. Um, there's definitely a variety of brands of Amaretto. You don't have to use the most expensive brand, but I would recommend skipping that bottom shelf brand. Real syrup. All right, just like before, we're gonna top with about 10 ounces of light lager. Aromatics, really similar. Get the almond, hint of citrus. Hmm. Well, I'll be honest. The Amaretto version is a little richer. I think you get a little bit better balance. But they're very similar. Um, if you didn't know any better, I think you might suspect that we used a, a cheaper Amaretto instead of an almond syrup. But it does a really good job of getting you all the way there. I just like on this one, hint more complexity. Definitely get those same notes, cherry, almond, citrus. Again, reminiscent of a cherry coke. I think either way you go, you're not gonna be disappointed. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna make a Moscow Mule. Typically, it's a ginger beer and vodka combo. Um, you can make this with a bunch of different beer options. Today, I'm gonna use our House American Lager Premium, but you could also use, goes around, um, another light sour would be great. A little bit of salt in there would probably be a fun play. You can also use any kind of glassware you want. Most commonly, you'll see these served in copper mugs. Um, today, because we're a beer place, we're gonna use an English pub glass. All right, so step one, we're gonna add one ounce of lime juice. And for step two, you're gonna do ginger beer. Now, you see a lot of opinions on ginger beer. Um, we're gonna use just a house ginger beer here. Super simple, straightforward. We're gonna add two ounces of ginger beer. For those that don't realize it, ginger beer is actually a separate beverage from ginger ale. It's a much stronger ginger flavor, really intense. Not something you just wanna sip on most likely, but it's perfect for a cocktail. All right, now we're gonna to top this up. You can use any American style lager. I mentioned goes around before a house, uh, one of our house gozos with a little sea salt in there. The key is just something that's not gonna overpower the other aspects of the drink, but let's be honest, ginger beer is pretty strong. So before we take a sip, we make our garnish. Always like to play around with different garnishes. Typically, you're gonna garnish this with a lime wedge, but you could also do a half wheel, something like that. Um, typically, this is also squeezed in for your sip. Dial up that lime juice a little further. Man. I think garnishing with a fresh lime makes a huge difference because you get those oils from the lime peel and that little squeeze uh, of extra citrus just gives it up top. Refreshing, easy to drink. That lime and the ginger beer are so strong you almost don't even notice the beer flavor that goes with it. A little easier to drink in my mind than um, the vodka based Moscow mules, but you can play with the ratios, increase your ginger beer, reduce your lime, but the key is big hit of lime, big hit of ginger and bubbles. Cheers. So today we went through three different beer cocktails. Whoa, 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 dude, dude. Before you stop, let's show them our favorite dive bar cocktail. The NASCAR spritz. You know. All right, step one, open a light beer. Step two, take a comfortable swig. Step three, Aperol. I don't know if you guys had Aperol before, but it's a really crazy spirit. It's got a sweetness and a bitterness component to it. You add that straight to your beer. Careful with the overflow and take a sip. Man, it's a crazy combination. It's, yeah. uh, the light beer really balances out the Aperol. It's kind of bitter and sweet. Yeah, I think for me, it takes away that bitterness. It almost gives it that like candied orange and a nice crisp beer. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. That wraps up our second episode about beer cocktails. 
Hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make all four of these cool drinks. We made a Dream Sigil, we made a Lunchbox, a Moscow Mule, and we even got a surprise visit with Trevor. We made a NASCAR Spritz. Sometimes they feel a little wrong, but you know they're so good. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to tell us your favorite beer cocktail or remind us of one we've forgotten about, do it in the comments below. Cheers, guys.